Good morning, you guys. It's me, Kiana, coming at you today. And I am coming at you with that video I promised you guys yesterday. And it is regarding starting businesses and giving you guys some extra details that you may um, don't know. Um, and also basically enlightening you guys on some things that um, can help you as far as if you want to start a business or if you want to expand on a business. Now, I don't proclaim to be an expert. All I do is basically I'm telling you guys things that I have learned over many, many years of owning several different businesses, whether it's small, medium, or large, um, a business is a business. And it takes certain key points to do any size business. Um, and what I do is I'm basically expressing and sharing with you guys things that has worked for me, things that I was able to accomplish, and things that has basically real talk fed my kids over long periods of time so um, this is a perfect opportunity as I said in the uh, videos that I did prior as far as starting a business and using some of the money that you get from income tax returns and basically using that money to feed your family or assist you with feeding your family all year long um, that doesn't mean I've said it before and I'll say it again that doesn't mean to not go out and buy things that you want or things that you consider a splurge item. That just means that we need to be wise with our money as far as using a set portion for, you know, doing something that will actually assist us with getting out of the poverty mindset or the poverty lifestyle. Um, and you can do that by using your tax return as an advantage to you or as a start. Um, for you and that's what I've been able to do um, since I was 20 years old you guys um, that's what I basically did and it worked for me and I'm just showing you guys or telling you guys what worked for me now if you check out my previous videos where I tell you guys about um, you know keeping your lo your overhead low and trying to find a business that you can see if it's needed in your community um, basically investigating it and as much as possible doing all your research and then following through with your research um, I will say and some of this some of the things I'm going to say in this video is going to be some things that you guys don't know that I do or have done now um, you all know that um, I plan on opening in the next I think it's the next six six to six eight weeks I believe that the website will be done for the clothes because I have to w wait for the inventory I have to do all of that good stuff Cody stop so you guys already know about that but um, what you guys don't know that I do is I do flea markets and stuff like that um, what do I sell at flea markets well at Valentine's Day I sell Valentine's Day baskets at Easter I sell Easter baskets um, I also do the gourmet apples sometimes and I share it with you guys how to make those. Um, it's things that I do at the flea market. People will say, you know, because people have said it already in the past, y'all already know, um, that maybe I sell couponing items. And this is what I have to say to that. First of all, when you coupon, you're not going to be able to get, unless you're doing extreme mega hauling like on the shows, you're not going to be able to get enough stuff that you actually can make good money doing. Second of all, people don't like to pay retail, especially if they're buying it off of you. So if you're couponing and say you get some shower gel for a dollar and it's, you know, in the store for three dollars. OK, they're not going to want to spend no more than one fifty for that shower gel. So you naturally if you do the math, you've only made 50 cents off of it, which is not a, a good amount of money. Um, in fact, if you're spending your time as far as pushing the item, as far as pushing it to be sold and all that kind of stuff, it's not worth the time. So it's kind of silly to try to sell couponing items. Um, and it's silly for anybody to think that too, because if you're not doing couponing at a level of where you're buying, say, uh, that shower job I'm talking about, if you're not buying like 20, 30, 40 cases of it, then you're, if you're only buying like 10, 11, 12, you're not, okay, you made 50 cents off each. So do the math. You've only made what? About $4? That's 
not, that's not worth anybody's time. In fact, I would rather keep it because it's going to save me long, long money, long term, because I don't have to keep replacing it, and I've gotten it so you know such at a good at a good price. So, if you're thinking about selling couponing items or whatever, um, you're not probably going to be able to do it unless you're doing it on a large scale, and then you have to take in the cost of. The coupons cost money because we, if we're not dumpster diving, we're paying for our newspapers. If you're printing the coupons, you are using printing ink. It's a lot of it's a lot of things to go into it. So it would be silly to even think that you're going to be able to do it, um, where you're going to actually be able to feed your family off of it. Um, so what you want to do is you want to find a business that is, like I said, needed in your community, and also that you only have to take a little bit of money as far as overhead. Now, flea markets. You can go to your local flea market. Um, and every state has one. You can go to your local flea market and literally get a table for about 10 to $15. A table means space. More than likely, if it's a large flea market, they will even use supply you the table. So, let's do the math. If you're buying, say, um, like for instance, y'all already know I went to Walmart and got a whole bunch of those baskets, right? Okay, so y'all know I went to and got a whole bunch of those baskets. But what y'all didn't know is I got a whole bunch for the shelter and I got twice as much. Yeah, I said twice as much because I'm going to make Valentine's Day baskets out of them. Now, as you all know, because we're on YouTube, we're going to show every, you know, we're going to show a lot of parts of our life, but we don't show every part of our life. So you guys don't see when I actually go to the flea market and sell stuff. I get a table for about $15, $20, and I put out my stuff because I'm creative. I'm a creative person. So why not make a couple of dollars off of their creativity, okay? You don't need a peddler's license. You don't need a vendor's license when you're at a actual flea market. If you're not selling things that are edible, they don't even have to get it um, health inspected, okay? So if you're doing... Um, baskets and say you wanted to get like I did a couple of cases of the baskets that was we got literally marked down to like what a dollar and a quarter okay so me what I would do is because I paid a dollar and a quarter for their baskets I buy wholesale uh, the, the cellophane um, basket wrapper all that kind of stuff for the big baskets I go to Dollar Tree or I buy a wholesale depending on the price and I get big baskets I actually put other stuff in a basket with that big basket I got from Walmart and I sell it for maybe about 20 bucks where I made a profit after you take in consideration with the cellophane that I had to buy you take in consideration I paid a dollar and a quarter for the actual bath stuff that was in a basket at Walmart and then you take into consideration I had to buy an actual big basket altogether I paid about you would say about 350 for everything. Um, once I buy wholesale, like little things, like little teddy bears that say "Be my Valentine" and little teeny ones and stuff like that, throw that down in there. Some shredded tissue paper. You can get that stuff in bulk as well. Google it. Um, and like I said, all I got about and paid about four bucks for it, but I can sell it for twenty. Now one sale will cover one sale of one basket. Now mind you, I'll be there from seven in the morning to three in the afternoon just at that one location not including if I was to sell stuff in my area because people know I do these things okay so if you do the math okay I spent four dollars I'm making 20 off of each basket the table cost me 20 bucks for that day I sell one basket and I paid for the table rental for one basket now say if I have 20 or 30 of those baskets do the math. 30 baskets is 600 bucks. If I was to sell 30 baskets, and trust me, you can sell 30 baskets around Valentine's Day and Easter time, easy. Like, nothing. Trust me. Okay? We do it. We know. So, if you sell 30 baskets, that's going to go like hotcakes, and you can leave and go home after that. The sooner you get them out, the sooner you pay for the sooner you get it out, the sooner... Pody... The sooner you get it out and the sooner that you go ahead and um, pay for, 
I'm sorry, I, I got distracted with Pootie. So the sooner you get it out, and the sooner you sell all your items, you guys, it's a wrap. You can leave right after that. Okay, so you may be there for two, three hours, and you'd have made how much money for selling um, 30 baskets? $600? All together, you'd have put in what? About. You didn't put in about 120 bucks at best to actually make the baskets. You made 600. How many people on that job can say that in five hours, three hours, four hours, they've made $600? How many jobs pay you that much per hour, the breakdown, to equal 600? Ask yourself, do, you, do your job pay you that? And see, this is the things that we don't understand that we can invest in. Use these talents, these God-given talents that God has given us to be creative. Use those and actually be able to feed your family and supply for your family all year long. Because if you do this every holiday, Mother's Day, Valentine's Day, Easter, Christmas, if you do these at these times, you guys, these things will basically curl you over and see this is the thing you don't want to just do these things these are just little things that you have your hands on okay so therefore money is just flowing all around you if in fact you use your creativity to do so um another thing is have your family in on this as well why should my daughter go flip burgers at burger king and mcdonald's when her mother has a business mind and I can invest in my daughter and and front her money to start her own business and to start out with owning her own and teaching her these life skills why not do that and rather than let her go flip those burgers think about it and she can make three four times the amount that she makes at McDonald's just like my daughter. A lot of people don't know this. I bought my daughter a $300 snowball machine. Every year, she has a 10-year warranty on it. Every year, she can sell snowballs to all her little friends and all the people that she knows. Okay? So, we have the snowball machine. I paid $300 for it, right? 10-year guaranteed warranty if anything ever happens to it. And those snowball machines, let me tell you, last forever. Okay, forever. Now, she can make at least two, three hundred dollars a day because she sells them for one twenty five a piece. Do the math. If she sits out there five days a week, she'd have made a thousand dollars a week. And my daughter been doing that since she was fifteen. She's almost seventeen. Yeah, it's only during the summertime, but that's why she grind hard on the summer. She out there five to six days a week, her own set hours, and she makes almost a little bit over a grand a week doing it. A week. And some would say, well, why don't y'all just go buy a house and why don't y'all... This is the thing. I don't want to fix the upper. When I want to buy a house, we will. Does that define, you know, that that you don't have money because you don't own a house? I mean, come on now. If, if if I own a business or two, don't you think that the amount for my business is worth a house? The amount for my business year to date for collecting off of that business is, is the value of a house? I mean, really think about it. Sometimes people say silly stuff. You know what I mean? So, um, and that's people usually that don't know about business. Because people don't understand that a business, the value of a business, just like if I was dra driving a Mercedes Benz, if I was driving a, a, a brand new Lexus, don't you think that my van service with that new van that has six TVs installed in it and all that kind of stuff, don't you think that that would be the value of a Lexus? Don't you understand that I could drive a Lexus if I wanted to, but I'd rather have this van service that's paying me all year long? I'd rather have a van service that's my bread and butter. I'd rather have a van service so I don't have to go out there and work for the, for somebody else. Think about it. And I'm not saying this as a put down to anybody. I'm just saying we have to be smart. We have to be wise. 
We have to think long term. We have to invest in ourselves, just like we invest in other companies. Invest in ourselves. Why not? If you could believe in the job that you work for, why can't you believe in yourself and do that? You use this tax money as an opportunity to think outside the box, to think about low overhead companies. Like, like I said, even if you do the flea market, that's your business. It's a business. Whether people want to recognize it or not, it's a business. And your check every week and every day in your pocket will reflect that it's a business. So just think outside the box. Don't always look at something like a flea market or whatever as little money because it actually is good money, big money. Because people go to a flea market for what? To buy. Nobody wants to come out of a flea market without a product in their hand. So why not let it be yours? On that note, you guys, I love you so much. Be blessed.